Welcome to the Solid Cam University channel. This video's topic is turning from just a 2D sketch. So this is kind of a follow-up to a previous video where I showed you how to do milling toolpaths on just a 2D sketch. In this video, I'll be doing turning toolpaths on just a 2D sketch. So this is pretty actually pretty common for, for people that use a simple lathe, just a 2D lathe, uh, where they maybe just draw in a simple sketch or maybe they get a print file in a DWG or DXF format and they just import it and they just want to work on it. They don't want to turn it into a solid. Uh, I would say that having a solid actually is a little more beneficial for SolidCAM because then you could do things like collision detection or gouge checking. Um, but if you want to just start from the 2D sketch, you have that ability. There's only one little thing you have to do, and then basically you can do all the same sort of stuff you would do with the regular part file. So let's take a look at that. So this 2D sketch I've already created inside SolidWorks. It's just a simple 2D sketch the same way you would probably do it in any other software. What you'll do is when you go into SolidCAM, you can choose your mill turn just like we would always do for a turning part. And I'll just choose my post like I normally would. So once that window pops up, I'll just say, let's just go down to one of my posts and the coordinate system. So normally with a turning part inside SolidCAM, what you'll be doing is you'll actually use center revolution face, but we don't have any faces on this part. We just have a 2D sketch. So I'm going to use the define option, similar to what we saw with the other video on the milling side. Um, I'll start by choosing an origin. So my sketch is not the best. I don't have the actual center of the, of the, of the ID. I just have this line that represents it. So what I'll do is I'm just going to choose the actual tip of that part of the sketch because I know my dimensions. I can read it. I can probably measure this ahead of time if I'm looking at the print. I know all the dimensions. So I know that if I make this the x-axis, and I don't have any other lines on here, so I have to choose this line to make this the y-axis. I can do a flip around X to get my Z to be pointing in the right direction. And now I can put in some dimensions in there. Again, I don't have any solids to work off of, so I can't choose the center of rotation, but I can go to the X direction, put in a negative 6.25, and that puts it on the center axis, the rotary axis. Um, I want some material on the front there, so I'll just shift this in the Z direction by let's say 20 thou. And my coordinate system is now in the right position. So I'll just click the green check mark to accept that. In terms of stock and target definition, uh, again, I don't have any solids to select. So I can't really define a target, but I already have what my target would have generated, the target profile. So I'll just use that sketch geometry later on when I do my toolpath. In terms of stock, well, it just means I can't use relative to model. I don't have a model, I don't have any solids. I'll just set this to absolute coordinates. And then based off of that coordinate system, I'll just put some absolute values in there. So let's say we put in 3.5, eh, let's make that four. Make it four on the positive Z direction. Let's put in, actually it's, re it's uh, referencing my coordinate system. So I'll leave that at zero. The length looks like it's enough. I think we're good. So the stock profile will automatically be generated. It's just going to be generated off of that default stock rather than a relative to model. But at this point, everything pretty much looks the same as a standard turning part. I don't have a target, but I already have a target profile, so I'm good. Okay, let me just go into my setup and I'll just add a fixture real quick. So probably more likely to have something like that. And let me just set these guys up here real quick. Okay. So we've got the clamping diameter set up. Let me just set up our position. I'll just hold it there. And if we take a look at our little representation, Pretty much everything is there. Now, obviously, the stock the stock is there, the fixture is there, the target is in there, but we didn't have that anyway. But at this point, we are ready to add toolpaths, and it works the exact same way. So it's not necessarily called the target profile, but those sketches will, will be something I'm actually able to click on and use. So if I just zoom in here, I'll just make this facing toolpath very quickly. So just grab that. Now that I've grabbed that sketch geometry, again, it doesn't matter where it came from, it's understood to be sketch geometry. I can do an extension of it. I can select a tool. Let's just select the tool real quick here. Okay, 
Uh, let me just correct the mounting on that. But at this point, you can see everything is pretty much the same as just a standard turning operation or, or a standard turning part. The only thing that was different was I didn't start from a target. I started from actually, I kind of almost told Solid Cam to skip a step in, in, in an essence because um, choosing a solid would have just generated this target profile. But by coming in with just a sketch, I've already given it that target profile. So there's really nothing extra to do other than the coordinate system creation and then just skipping anything that is using just the stock for definition. In this case, the stock itself, I could have just defined it as absolute coordinates. The coordinate system, I just used the lines that I had on screen and maybe just shifted things a bit. And then you can see there that everything's the same. If I do my simulations, this simulation has nothing to represent the target, but it is still affecting the stock. It is still showing the toolpaths. Any questions with this or anything else from Solicam, just give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. You can send us your parts or your questions via the ticket system at solicamsupport.com. And stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.